that, I'm really thrilled to uh, open up the next conversation um, with Ho Yun Chung, who is the founder and CEO of Remo, which is the amazing platform that's brought us all here today. Uh, so Ho Yun, this is my, my second event I attended on Remo, and in both cases, I've just been really blown away by the energy that events on Remo have. So thank you for building this and uh, for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you, thank you so much, John. I'm super excited to 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 be on this on this uh, section and uh, to have a conversation with you, John. Awesome, awesome. Before we dive in, I'll I'll just remind the audience: please submit questions via the the Q and A tab, and we'll be sure to uh, spend time to answer them. So, uh, Ho Yun, we're we're all here on Remo. We can see what this does, but you know, I'd love for the audience to actually hear the founding story. How did you come to what you're doing today on Remo? So I originally had a um, another company, and we were a um, a SaaS company. And that SaaS company, we had over twenty five people that worked remotely. And um, and one of the key problems that we now all experience through COVID and and through through the trends of remote work is it's really hard to connect. It's hard to carry, it's hard to it's hard to feel like part of the team. Feel like you have that human connection. So we created. Um, a product that's very similar to this is called the virtual office, Remo virtual office, which was basically a the same thing, a map, but it was just a bunch of offices and people can kind of like go into it. And we still have this product. We still sell it right now today. Um, we started selling it in January last year. No one really bought it. It was like classic, like, you know, thought of something and it didn't really pan out the way how you originally planned it. Um, people were like saying, why would, why would we use you if we have second Zoom? Um, and then we had an opportunity to work with a, uh, a version called Remote Work Summit, and we just created a conference version of this product um, within like three weeks. And originally, we were like trying to sell the virtual office with the conference product, but at the end of the day, um, you know, we got ten thousand people going through this conference. Everyone loved it. The funny thing is, no one bought or mentioned about the virtual office after the conference. Everyone was like. Hey, this conference experience is amazing. Uh, can I host my conference on here? And I said, Well, uh, you gotta give me a few months because this is not a product yet. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was just like a crazy pivot, and um, it was definitely something that, that I, I did not foresee. Totally, totally. Well, it's, I think you know, uh, you know what you're reacting to the comment. You got to be ready to pivot on a dime. I certainly agree, and I think one of the things that I'd love to hear a little bit more about is as you've seen all of these events migrating to being hosted online, what have you learned about what users want out of a, out of an online event and how has that informed, you know, product decisions you've made and how you've gone about building this platform? I mean, it, it really kind of drives home really what our vision was and, and our vision is, is that we want to create an environment that creates authentic conversations that drive meaningful relationships. And I think, what we've seen is that a lot of people are really excited about the platform piece because they're able to have real conversations with others and real conversations that I think may have been lacking in some degree in our current discourse and how we use technology. Not to say that social media is bad, but it's more of like there just hasn't been much options aside from one to just text. Like it's we just haven't had many other options, and um, I think people were seeking. A much more different way to talk to each other than maybe is polarizing. Maybe it's less of this combative nature sometimes of social media and somewhere where you can just have normal conversations. And I think that that really resonated with a lot of people. And the fact that it's not just like a meeting, like Zoom. Zoom is great. Um, but it's really great for meetings. And and now people are kind of seeing that there's a difference between meetings and a conversation. That there's needs to be maybe. A different paradigm, and, and our thesis is that I, we think that there should be a different paradigm. You can't just apply the Zoom sort of call and assume that all spectrum of human interaction should exactly be like a meeting. Yeah, that's, I think that's spot on, and it's been interesting to watch how Zoom has been um, shoehorned into all of these, you know, consumer use cases that it, you know, originally wasn't intended for. And I think as we move towards a more um, uh, a place where distributed work and distributed collaboration is more of a norm. You'll see more built for purpose platforms like Remo. So that's really great. 
you know, I think one of the really interesting things I mentioned up front, we're enterprise software investors. And historically, you know, events have been one of the primary ways that businesses acquire customers. Uh, you know, it's often more than 50% of your company's overall marketing budget. Um, and obviously overnight, that that whole, you know, um, landscape has been shut down and people are really quickly trying to shift that budget and learn how to host these events online. I'd love to hear a little bit about what you're observing in terms of the companies that are successfully managing to make that migration and where, you know, some companies might be stumbling to, to adapt to doing these kinds of events online. Yeah, so we've seen a huge spectrum and, and I can share the two, the two radicals like opposites. One is people are diving straight in. You know, I've, I've met event agencies that are looking at all of the platforms and we're just one of them and really doing their research. And it, the age doesn't, not like the company or the people are young or old. It's just, I, I think it's just mindset. Like they see this as an opportunity um, to do something and just change or change their business and to uh, adapt. Then you've got people on the other side, which are that that maybe are not adapting as quick. Um, they're trying, uh, but maybe they've been they're not so used to doing things in a certain way, um, and they're struggling to try to adapt back. And some of them are just waiting. Some of them are trying to learn, which which I think is great. Um, the ones that are most helpful, I would say, are the ones that are just really really willing to learn and try. I mean, that sounds very obvious, um, and they're. You know, they, they're, I would say they're quite fearless. Like, there's a lot of unknown, but they do it in a way where, like, they do small events and then gradually, gradually to much larger events, which is what we recommend, anyways. If someone came to us and said, I want to do a 1,000 person event, the first thing I would say is, if this is your first event, I don't think it's a good idea, you know, um, because you need to learn. Like, you know, you need to learn how, how to do our platform and learn how to do online events in general, which is a little bit different than offline events. Totally. Yeah. And it's interesting. I mean, given the cost of hosting an event, there's sort of a certain scale that a physical event needs to be for it to make sense. Whereas a, an online event, just given the nature of it being um, much lower CapEx to get going, there's actually a lot more opportunity for smaller and more tailored events. I imagine you're seeing some of that as well. A lot, a lot. It's just, it's, just, it's changing a lot. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. You know, I, I guess I'd be curious if you had to hazard a guess, um, on the other side of this, what percentage of events might remain, you know, fully digital online events? Um, you know, have you started to get any clarity from the people that you work with around, you know, what their plan is post COVID around, you know, what role online events versus in-person events will, will have for them? Yeah. So I, I've been asking this question a lot. Um, and you know, it's, it's sort of like, what's going to happen post COVID. So I've been very pleasantly surprised. Um, and, that a lot of them have now felt that virtual events and physical events are things that people should do together. Like, like they'll have, they'll, they'll say, the customer say to me is we plan on doing three uh, physical events and maybe one or two virtual events, uh, just depending on that. And they, and what's interesting is that like, um, yeah, Alex, yeah, they're going to, they are going to certainly go outside and hug. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, and the reason, is that when I ask a lot of customers prior to COVID, and I ask them, hey, you know, would you guys want to do, a, have you guys done a webinar? And they always say, oh, we've always wanted to do it, but we never had the time. And it's, it spans across all customers. And the problem is that you're just so used to doing offline events, you don't really have enough headspace to think about online. When everyone is forced to do it, that big step, or it's seemingly a big step, has not been conquered. Everything else is just a small step. Like it's just very easy to everything else. And so they're finding many use cases that originally treated us as a substitute for an offline event. Now it's becoming a value add. For example, we have this one client called One About Jobs. They have they used us to replace offline events in many different Asian cities. Now they figured out that they can do regional events across the whole thing and they're a recruiting platform. So now they can recruit from different cities to the that pool, which now is like this incredible value add for them. So I believe it's, it's an accelerant and it, we will never replace physical, but I think this is a huge crash course in virtual and um, just based off of my telling me, I, I mean, I, I don't venture to, 
to definitely uh, 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 to project or to estimate, but based on what our customers telling me, you know, it looks like anywhere between 50, 50, 60, 40, uh, being 40% being virtual. Fantastic, that's awesome. You know, I, I guess one question I, I have to ask is like, it's so impressive how deep this platform is for a company at your stage and all of the different ways it can be used. Um, if there's one thing right now that you'd like to, you know, ship or something on your product roadmap that you can give us a little peek into uh, as you continue to make, you know, digital events and online events more um, uh, more engaging, what are the things that you're, you know, excited to be working on right now? So, I mean, we, we, we view, um, there's like two sides to the way how we view the event experience. One is, is like more from an attendee uh, social experience and the other is more from like a host and how they can create better experiences that fit their fit their goals and what they want from the attendee experience um, we have been experimenting on how different ways attendees interact with each other from a, a small group setting and, and a breakout in, in that kind of small table and the way how they interact and we are a company where we draw a lot of inspiration from our human behavior uh, we believe in like that is the best way to, from a UI UX perspective, for people to understand the product. And so, um, you know, we've got ideas where like people can actually do cheers, for example, like some, I can cheers with you, John, and uh, about something to celebrate, um, which celebrates a key moment in our conversation. That's something that's reflective, something we can remember. And, you know, we, we have this element where you can kind of cheers each other and, and which is what we do a lot in social, you know, at a bar or, you know, to celebrate for whatever reason. Um, from a host standpoint, we're looking into creating, really digging into customization of the maps. So we just released a feature where people are designing their maps like crazy. And it is insane. It's it's almost become a content generation thing, play now. I, and which I, even myself, like it, sometimes this surprises me. So now people are generating their own content, the map, to express their brand. And we're now seeing this as a really strong brand expression. Uh, an advertising, a, a branding, branding opportunity for a lot of brands now in the way how they do their events. Yeah, that's awesome. That last point actually touches on a, a really intelligent question that came through, which is, you know, as the modality of community evolves and UI actually becomes a, a way that relationships get um, formed, you know, are you looking into building different products or different venues for different types of events? Uh, I think platform right now can be used in as we mentioned earlier, small and big events, but if you think about all the different types of events that might migrate online, how are you thinking about how you might tailor the platform and, and the UI to those different types of events? Yeah, um, we do have a lot. For example, like hiring fairs, uh, we have like people have done speed dating here. Um, mm -hmm. People have done, I, I spoke to this one company that is a wedding venue and her business is like, done right like not done but just like not not going anywhere anytime soon she wants to do virtual weddings um so there's a lot of new kind of ideas coming out uh in a lot of these industries um, what what our kind of approach at least within the event industry is the map customization allows people to basically treat this as your canvas and do whatever they want to suit these cases Right now, we are a little bit open in terms of like what you can. we haven't built event like event type specific stuff. We're trying to like be more all encompassing, um, but you know I, I do believe that there are certain types of events that we we can build really good things. Like for example, we have a timer that's used in many different ways: speed networking, speed dating, and also just for like pitching. We have accelerators use our platform pitch nights. So um, it's it's definitely we're kind of be strategic and building the features that can accommodate as much uh, use cases as we can. Yeah, awesome. I think we're getting close on time. So, oh yeah, and I guess any closing thoughts or any things that you're, um, you know, interested to tell the audience about it, about what you're seeing and building it at Remo. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think like like the like COVID has definitely created a, a, a tremendous opportunity for the remote realm, and I think like people are seeing. Uh, how they can use technology and just digitizing their their businesses and their lives much more quicker, um, and I think that you know this is a, a, a great opportunity for all like remote type uh, companies. But I think there's also a lot of opportunities even outside remote that you can really leverage on, and I think that's great. Yeah. Awesome.
Well, thanks so much for the time, Ho Yen. Great conversation. I'll hand it back over to Alex.